Okay, in example two, we're going to use the one-to-one -one property, um, and the exponential form of that property says that if b to the m equals b to the n, then m equals n. So if our bases are equal, our exponents are equal. So to use that property to solve this equation, I need to make my bases the same on both the left and right sides of the equal sign. So I'm going to change this 25 to be a base of 5. So 25 is 5 squared, and that's still being raised to the x minus 4 power. And when you power a power, properties of exponents say you multiply the exponents. So we're going to distribute that 2 to both the x and the 4. So now on this side of the equal sign, we have 5 raised to the 2x minus 8 power. And that's equal to... 5 raised to the 3x plus 1 power. Now that our bases are the same, they're both a base of 5, we can set our exponents equal. So 2x minus 8 is equal to 3x plus 1. Then we'll subtract 2x from both sides and subtract 1 from both sides to get x is equal to negative 9. Okay, then to check that answer, we're going to need our calculator. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and store that answer, negative 9, as the x. So negative 9 store x. And then we're going to type that into our expression here, the original. So 25 raised to the x minus 4 power. Then second math opens the test menu and number 1 is equals 5 raised to the 3x plus 1 power. And when you use the equals in the test menu, then the calculator is going to substitute the negative 9 for the x's and decide is this a true statement or is it not true. If it's true, it returns a 1. If it's false, it returns a 0. So we press enter, we get back a 1, and that tells me that x equals negative 9 checks and is a valid solution. Okay, in example B, we have a 1 ninth and a 729 as the bases. And um, if you recall on that cheat sheet on the back of your evaluating logs notes, um, 729 can be written as 3 to the 6th power. 1 ninth, uh, that's a reciprocal, so we'll have a negative exponent. So 1 ninth would be 3 to the negative 2 power. And then remember when we power a power, we multiply the exponents. So that'll be an x plus 1. And then 729 is 3 to the 6th power. So now our bases are equal. We can set our exponents equal. So we'll go ahead and distribute that negative 2 through the exponent. And we'll have a negative 2x minus 2, and then that's equal to the exponent of 6. Then we're going to add 2 to both sides, and negative 2x is equal to 8. And then we'll divide both sides by negative 2, and x equals negative 4 is our solution. So now we're going to check that answer. So we'll go ahead and store negative 4 as the x, and then 1 ninth raised to the x plus 1 power 
equals 729. And we get back a 1, which means that that answer checks. Okay, next we're going to look at um, the one-to-one -one property for log expressions. And um, that tells us that if the log base b of m equals the log base b of n, um, the logs of the same base means the arguments of those logs are equal, so m equals n. Since we have a natural log on both sides, one natural log equals another natural log, we can set the argument 2x minus 3 equal to the argument of the other natural log 3x minus 8. Then we'll subtract 2x from both sides and add 8 to both sides and x equals 5. Okay, then to check that answer, we're going to come back to the calculator, 5 store x, enter, and then natural log of the quantity 2x minus 3, and then equals natural log of the quantity 3x minus 8. Press enter, we get back a 1, and so that checks. Okay, now uh, in example D, we have 2 times the log of the quantity x minus 5 equals the log of the quantity x plus 1. So these logs do have the same base, but it's not just one log equal to another log, it's 2 times this log of x minus 5. So we can't yet use the one-to-one -one property for logarithms. First, we're going to need to apply the power property in order to move this coefficient to become an exponent on the argument of that log. So using that product property, we'll have the common log of the quantity x minus 5 squared and that is equal to the common log of the quantity x plus 1. Okay, so now using that um, power property, we have a common log equal to a common log. Now we can apply the one-to-one -one property and set the arguments of the logs equal to each other. So this is going to be an x minus 5 quantity squared equal to x plus 1. I'm going to go ahead and um, expand that perfect square trinomial, uh, or you could foil x minus 5 times x minus 5, and you'll get x squared minus 10x plus 25 equal to the argument of the log on the other side, which is x plus 1. Okay, and that is quadratic, so we're going to need to set it equal to 0 and then see if it factors um, in order to solve. So we'll subtract x from both sides, subtract 1 from both sides, and we'll have x squared minus 11x minus 1 would be a positive 24, and that is equal to 0. So to factor, we're looking for factors of 24 that add to equal negative 11, and that would be a negative 8 and a negative 3. Right, negative 8 plus negative 3 is negative 11, but negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24. So this quadratic trinomial factors as x minus 8 times the quantity x minus 3. And then we'll use the zero product property to set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So this factor gives us x equals 8 as a solution. This factor gives us x equals 3 as a solution. And then we want to check our two solutions. So we're going to take the 8 and store that as x. And we'll have 2 log of the quantity x minus 5 
and then equals the common log of the quantity x plus 1. And we get back a 1, so we know that x equals 8 checks. Okay, then we're going to take the 3 and store that as x. And then I can do second enter, second enter to bring back that last line I typed. Press enter, and notice this time I get an error that says non-real answer. So x equals 3 does not check. So this is extraneous. So we cross that out and write extraneous. And if we look at why x equals 3 isn't going to work, if we put in a 3 here, we'll have 2 times the log of the quantity 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. And the log, uh, common log is undefined at um, an argument of negative 2. Remember, you have an asymptote at 0, which means you can't have a log of a negative argument. So since x equals 3 causes a non-real answer, we cross that off and it's not a solution. So the only solution that works um, is x equals 8.